Thanks to our great sponsors, Jack Burford, Chevrolet, ExpressRoofing.net, Cumberland Valley, National Bank, CSEP, State Farm Insurance, Jerry Goble Agent, Luxury Pet Services, Equipment, Sales and Rentals, May Marketing, KYMedia.net, Real Life Community Church, Time Warner Cable, and Madison County School. Welcome to the Coach Mark Finner Show. Hi, I'm Samantha Barker with Madison County School Sports Television. We want you to watch the Coach Mark Center Show. We look forward to seeing you on Madison County School Sports Television. Welcome back to the Coach Mark Center Show. I'm Samantha Burford. We're here at Jack Burford Chevrolet. They're our official Mark Center Coaches sponsor. So we take over their uh, customer service lounge after every home game. And Coach, I've been looking forward to this interview all week long. Thank you. You guys have got some wonderful defense going on. And it seems like this past week it really opened up for the offense. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on your big win against Woodford County? It's always good to get a, a good homecoming win and and uh, you know be able to be clicking on all sides of the ball. And that was that was a lot of fun. You know we've we've had our moments this year where we've we've uh, you know come out of the gate slow and, and fortunately we were able to jump out uh, fast uh, against yeah. Woodford and uh, you know so that that definitely made things kind of could get off to a much better start. Offense was clicking. Uh, defense continues to play very well. Special teams playing well. So uh, you know, all in all, a really good night. And and uh, you know, we uh, once again, thankfully, we're able to do our job and and uh, and, and win a and uh, you know win a, the homecoming game. That's kind of always been my philosophy. That you know, in order for homecoming to truly be right. a success for the school, the football team's supposed to win the football game. So right. uh, you know, we we were able to come through and uh, you know a great night and and uh, kind of wrap up uh, season one. As well, I've been telling our guys that uh, you kind of wrap up season one on a successful note, and now we're going into our open week and, and, yes. and preparing for season number two. So you guys are five and one on the season, mm -hmm. and you had the big win, forty-two and zero. So you really, I mean, this is the second shutout of the season so far. Yep. Defense is fantastic. Everybody's talking about your defense. Yep, continuing to play well, and and you know really. You know that that's definitely been a, a part of our, our team that's carried us early on and, and really helped us, you know, uh, get off to a great start for the season and and you know as the in the coming weeks you know definitely we're gonna have that tested and and uh, just see see just exactly where we're at in, in all phases as a team you know that, that that's the you know the, the most important part of the season you know the regular season coming up here and, and what we kind of refer to as season number two right. the, the district part of the season right so uh, you know we're really very excited about that we know we're going to be tested we got uh, uh, you know, a couple of the, the uh, high scoring teams in the state coming up on the schedule with uh, Tate's Creek and Lafayette yes. and then we also have uh, you know, uh, another uh, the wrapping up our district schedule with uh, GRC, uh, which is you know a rivalry game, always a, a tough uh, opponent, and, mm -hmm. and then of course wrapping up the season week ten with the county rivalry of Southern. So four uh, really big weeks coming up here after the open date, and and uh, you know obviously like, like I say, you know Tate's Creek's been averaging about forty five points a game here the last uh, few weeks, and really playing well and Lafayette you know already preseason hype and everything we, we kind of knew what they were going to have coming in so you know two big tests coming mm -hmm. up here. Before we get into all the statistics and everything about this week's game let's talk a little bit you have to refresh your memory and I'm sure it's easy to do we won't go back too far but let's go back the week before into Lexington Catholic mm -hmm. that was a very big win it was a very dramatic win because you had the rain delay for two hours so you guys were leading had the rain delay and then instead of coming back the next day i guess you guys mutually decided to let's keep stick playing out. and stick it out after so what you guys went back into play at 11 p.m yeah probably after uh yeah, <laughs> yeah just after it was very late it was uh, it was uh, about two and a half hour delay uh we had uh, gotten off to a really good start we were able to jump out uh, early, uh, and, uh, Jabari broke a, a big, big run early. Uh, kind of put us on the board, and and uh, you know just really uh, played a very 
complete first half. Honestly, it, it was it was a good start. You know, we actually left some points on the board. We had a, a couple of drives where we really felt like that. You know, we, we got a couple of field goals and we really felt like we should have finished them off. Actually, got stopped at the three yard line on a drive where uh, early in the game where uh, mm -hmm. I elected to go for it on uh, on fourth down. And uh, we just we didn't finish it out. That, that, that was my you know probably my fault. Probably should have went ahead and kicked it right there. Uh, but uh, you know the the guys did a great job. Those defense came up with a huge stop. We turned around, marched yeah. it right straight back down. Uh, you know, Coach Jones. Uh, it, it was a big day all around. That that, that morning, Coach Jones's son was born, and, and so oh, then that he, was a big day. Yeah, and then I so, did not know so that. He, he met us at Lexington Catholic, and then uh, and and proceeded to call the game that night and and did a great job. So you know that was it was a big day. I was joking mm -hmm. with him after the game. I said, you know this this kid thing's kind of working out he <laughs> laughed at it, but uh, but no it did you know our guys you know again our coaching staff our assistant coaches are doing a uh, fantastic job right. overall but uh, you know like I say we got out to a good start had a, had a really good first half uh, up 13-0 mm -hmm. left a couple of touchdowns on the board could have perhaps been up more than that Landon kicked very well uh, but we we let Landon actually Landon attempted a uh, a couple of 50 plus yarders, I think a 53 and a 54 yarder he attempted, I believe is what the official count was. I, mm -hmm. I still think one of them was 56, well, further. but, yeah. uh, but uh, and he just barely, just barely missed them. They, they, and, and like I told him, yeah, the way he was kicking them that night, if we needed it, we'd, we'd put him out there again because right. he was very close to hitting one. And But uh, all three phases played well there in the first half and then we had the big, uh, delay there at halftime. Right. How would you keep them motivated during that delay? Well, you know, our kids deserve a lot of credit on that because it's not the easiest thing to do to stay, you know, in that game. Right. Frame of mind. Physically, and, and, mentally. Yeah. The, and, and, you know, not they, exactly, you know, not to mention, you know, the body tightening up mm -hmm. after being warmed up and all those different things. So, you know, our kids did a really good job. Uh, I was glad that we had the snack box with us. The snacks that were for the uh, for post game okay. actually came out yeah. really in handy at halftime, so that kind of <laughs> helped out. Um, yeah, that was good then. Yeah, yeah, I mean, because that two hour delay was it was over two hours. Yeah, like I say, it that was, had to it, be it such really a big win. It was, and, they, you know, and it turned out to be the right decision to stay. You know, good. I mean, a lot of a lot of things you, you know went on. Uh, that night with other teams and and mm -hmm. them, you know, different team. Of course, everybody I'm sure has heard about the Scott County Lafayette yes. deal and yes. and the various things. But but for I, you know, we, Coach Perry and I and, and uh, you know, uh, Brandon Fritz was right there with me and and uh, Lexington Catholics AD. They were in in communication literally from the first delay on, and uh, and so it was really good, you know, because we were all four at the game prison and able to to really kind of communicate through one another and. And uh, you know, make the right decision uh, so let's for the stay kids. Through it. There's a lot of reasons why staying was the right decision, but bottom line, it, it, mm -hmm. it was just the, it was just all in all the best thing to do. So right. Well, you had the big win. You had 27 to 14 win. Yeah. I know that had to feel fantastic after they beat you guys last year, 41 to zero yeah. at home. So yeah. Yeah. it was the first time you beat Lexington Catholic, right? Yeah, it was. It was, and and you know, I mean, any time we're able to do something like that, that, that's something that's important to the program, and and we had a lot of people w uh, well wishing and things like that, and we certainly appreciate all of that, and, mm -hmm. and, and and very thankful for that. And it was a big win. Yeah. I don't want to you know take anything away from the win, but by any stretch of means, but. You know, like our kids, uh, you know, we talk to our kids about it, and our, our kids are in this frame of mind that, you know, if we're going to be the program that we say we want to be, mm -hmm. that that's going to be a, a game that we have to be able to consistently win. Right. Uh, and, and, you know, that's no disrespect whatsoever to the Lexington Catholic program. They are a phenomenal program. They dodge no one. You look at their schedule year in and year out. They're going to play a St. X or a Trinity year in and year out. They're going to play, uh, in many cases, a, a out of state power a lot. They, you know, they a lot of times they were playing Scott County. You know the the larger teams mm -hmm. they never you know they never back down from playing larger teams and larger opponents so you know it's a it's a testament to not only to their program but but hopefully the fact that we're uh moving in the right direction right and absolutely so it was a good win definitely a good yes. win and, and great for that momentum to carry over to into carry the over into game. this week mm -hmm. now so you you mentioned earlier you guys have a bye week this right. week so that's going to help you prepare for tate's creek obviously we hope so. You know, uh, the the thing that that our staff has has always kind of tried to do, 
you know, I kind of mentioned you know, the way we divide up the season. We kind of season one, season two, and season three. Mm -hmm. Of course, everything is in preparation for that season three because that's the playoffs. That's November. That's when all of your work needs to come to uh, the, the 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 boiling point. That's when it all needs to come to fruition. And and so you know, hopefully you you blessed to have some health and blessed to have some good luck upon the year, and and you get yourself in a position mm -hmm. to make some noise in November. And that's definitely what we want to do. Uh, but uh, you know the the season one kind of being in the books and rolling into district play after this open yes. week, everybody's zero and zero. Uh, and, and this game's and, not on a Friday night, and, right? And, right. And this it, game will be on Thursday, the sixth. Uh huh. Because uh, both school, both Fayette and and uh, Madison schools are on fall break for the sixth and the seventh. Uh, so uh, Mr. Fritz uh, kind of communicated with them, and it's. it's Still in the process of trying to orchestrate everything as far as the events of the day. I think we may try to pull off a soccer football doubleheader that night. That'd be cool. Um, and uh, hopefully everything works out for that. But at any rate, for our game, we know is going to be at 7:45 on Thursday, October the 6th. Uh, so uh, look forward to that, and hopefully, you know, it, it will help. Uh, you know, the crowd. I, I don't know how many ga other games will be moved or be on Thursday night. Right now, there's not a lot scheduled for that. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, as as fall breaks kind of straight shake out, some of those will be changed. But you know, we uh, we hopefully will be the uh, you know one of the only games around. So hopefully, a big crowd and definitely going to be a big one. You know, Takes Creek is getting a lot of notoriety. That again, they've got those two outstanding wide receivers. Uh, one of them, Jackson Beerman, uh, and the, then the Gentry kid is also a playmaker. And, and the Workman, Cameron Workman, the quarterback, and junior quarterback, is doing a fantastic job running their offense and. And they've just been explosive the last few mm -hmm. weeks. So, uh, you know, I, I would think a lot of eyes will be on that game to kind of see, you know, uh, which which team is going to take that next step. And and of course, you know, we're both uh, still kind of chasing Lafayette until uh, Lafayette's kind of to be the man. You got to beat the man. And, yes. and, and right now, Lafayette's their been, rankings yeah, are high right now. Right now, Lafayette's in that spot. So mm -hmm. I know both of. Uh, our team and, and Coach Sims State Creek team are, are fighting to, to try to, yes. to get to that spot. So speaking of rankings, you guys moved up in the rankings this week. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, we appreciate it and yeah. very thankful for it. But you know, you, you know me, I'm not going to put a lot of stock in <laughs> rankings until the end of the year. The, the end of right. the season rankings are what matter. Um, you know, I, I think that it's a good sign because I think that it's, uh, it's uh, showing respect for our program and showing respect for for uh, where we're going, uh, no question about that. And, and again, we're, we're very appreciative of that, but we have to keep a very clear eye set on the rankings at the end of the year, being yeah. far more than the rankings right now. Do you tell your coaches and players don't look at that stuff? Just to, to be honest about it, it has it not it has not come up one time. But the, the, this moment right here was the first time that it's come yeah. up. So. Uh, you know, I, I'm, and I'm proud of the guys for that. I, mm -hmm. You know, of course, you know, my, my coaches have been with me for a long time. We all are, are on the same page on that. But, uh, you know, and, and again, and, and that's great things. And I hope the kids yeah. feel good about it. And I hope I hope it builds confidence in our kids. But we certainly don't want it to breed any kind of content because. Exactly. Uh, Still the, big the, things it, to come. We have a lot more to go, a lot of big things to go with this season. What so. do you call it? Session two? No, yep. what do you call season it? Two. Season two. Season two. Season two. There you go. Yeah. And, Moving right into and, it. And we've got to be ready for season three. So season two gets us ready <laughs> for season three. That's right. I had, I don't ever remember hearing you call it that before, but I think it's fantastic. Yeah, we're, we're hopefully Very we're, smart. Hopefully we're, we're breaking it up the right way. Right. We, it's uh, and it's pro probably a little bit part of the progression of, of where we're at with our our not only our staff but our program at right now. Uh, you know, probably had a little bit more of a holistic approach the last two years in, in just trying to develop the mindset of the program mm -hmm. and, and and get our, our kids to where we need to be. But uh, this group has matured nicely and, and they know what to expect from us and and I think we're ready to kind of start looking at things in a little bit different manner. Yeah. Are you ready to talk some stats and, and get into some nuts and bolts of some sure. of the players? Yeah. Uh, we got a long list. You had some fantastic players that have done fantastic things this game. So let's just start with the quarterback. Mm -hmm. Zach Harden, your senior quarterback, he had some great passes. Yeah, had an outstanding first we'll half. Find and, him. Yeah. Uh, yeah had an out Six for 12 passing, had 159 yards. Right. You know, solid numbers. You know, again, uh, you know, six out of 12. 
uh, you know, 12 attempts and, and a, a couple of those, you know, we, we probably could have went three touchdowns in the first half. Uh, and in the way that game was going to flow, we, you know, obviously as the game went on and and the the, the score grew, uh, we we're going back off and not throw quite as much late. But uh, you know, passing game got loose. We got some guys open, and and uh, we're just really pleased to see guys start okay. making. You know, can we, we've been looking for playmakers all year long. Uh, I mentioned that to Nathan with the paper several times, and mm -hmm. and that that's kind of been a theme. And we're starting to see more and more guys emerge and be those playmakers. And step up. That, that we expect them to be. That's right. And, and like I've said all along, I personally believe we have a ton of playmakers that they're just waiting to emerge. And now they're starting to. Mm -hmm. and, and I want to see them come out more. And uh, there's, there, we're definitely getting that going. One of the names that we talk about typically every week, Ethan Hahn. Mm -hmm. Caught a pass and ran 44 yards for a TD right there in the first quarter. Yeah, made a, made a, ran a really good route and made a good catch. And you know he'd been he he'd been seeking that first touchdown, <laughs> that, that first varsity touchdown. You could almost yes. see it in him. I never really talked to him directly about it, but but I could see it in him. He was wanting it so bad, and so yeah. uh, you know really pleased to see him get that. And hopefully he'll relax a little bit. Ethan is, uh, you know, one of those guys. He he his all-purpose yards, you know. Uh, you know, he, he hasn't had that huge game rushing yet, and he, and he, but he had one, one game where he was up close to 100 yards receiving, but, you know, his, his combined receiving and rushing yards are making him a very dangerous threat. Yeah. All right, also in the first quarter, Evan Harris, he had a 46-yard touchdown cat, catch, and that was, I think, the last play of the first quarter right there. Yeah, and a really good catch. He, he really, he ran the route exactly correctly. You know, it's something that, how many times have I talked about that this year? Yes. You know, in terms of, you know, maybe just a little bit off here, a little bit off there. Uh, but, but uh, you know, that, that right there is proof positive that, that running the route correctly, making the correct read on the route and doing uh, what he's supposed to do, uh, you know, and, and, and just, you know, look the ball in and turned on the Jets and made a, made a it was a tough catch Smart that he play, turned yeah. into a really good play. Yeah, yes. All right, Keenan Miller, we always talk about him. Second quarter, he had a 50-yard touchdown catch, and um, that was I think that was a few minutes right before the second half. Yep, took the screen pass and kind of exploded through and, and, and did a really good job with that, and that, that's his, uh, I think it's his third or fourth touchdown on the year. I was going to say, I can't remember. They start to add up, don't they? Yeah, I mean, I hope so. they're probably keeping track. <laughs> yeah. I didn't put it in my notes. Yeah. And then we want to talk about Jabari, of course, Jabari. Yeah. We talk about him every week, 55 yard touchdown. Well, and that was such a key time, uh, you know, for that, the timing and, and the way he broke that run mm -hmm. probably put the game away. Uh, it, yes, that was right there at the beginning of the second right, half. Right Great up. momentum. Yep, and, and and he just exploded, and from that point on, things things were were able to clicking. get going. Mm -hmm. Would you say clicking? It's what yep. it seemed like. Everything yep. just kind of clicked. For sure, and mm -hmm. you know, and like I say, it, it just that got us that, that got us up close to the running clock. It, it may have. Gotten, oh yeah. It may have gotten the running clock. That may have been the touchdown that got the running clock. I can't remember yeah. for sure, but everybody it, it put us close and. And you know, and at that point, you know, it, okay, let's finish this thing out, keep everyone healthy, play as many guys as we can, mm -hmm. and let's go. Yeah, everybody up top, we were all like, okay, what's the number? What's the number as far as getting us into the running clock? We were like, 36. okay, I, yeah, we were all adding it up. Okay, <laughs> will that touchdown put us in there? Mm -hmm. So yeah, everybody was up there talking to one another. So mm -hmm. and actually, our people for Madison County School Sports sat in the same box as the uh, Woodford County. Oh wow! So that was a little interesting to <laughs> say the least. They were very every. Everyone was very kind, but it, you know you could hear the excitement from us, and then they would be like, "Oh, and then they yeah. scored again." So it was a little weird, you know, when you're sitting in the same box with them. Yeah, you got to be polite, was. not disruptive, and but you know you want to show excitement too. Yes, they just scored. So, <laughs> and then they would be whispering. So, <laughs> all right, let's talk Landon White. So, Phil Go. Uh, he had one from the 25 and one from the 23. Yep. Yeah. Now, did he miss his first one? Am I remembering Just correctly? Barely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We were Actually, all clapping because yeah. we thought it went in and then yeah, yeah, yeah. Coach Boone was, was the one that actually told me because I saw it go up and I turned and and yeah, you was, thought it went I, in. I, I, I Good, okay, I yeah, did too. I, yeah, we were I, like, that went in. I turned and walked I and I turned around and said, "Wait a minute, what?" And Coach <laughs> Boone was like, "Yeah," he said, he, he just barely pushed it wide right and yeah. you know, it, but it was a, it was a, a really good kick from that right hash. He just pushed it a little bit, but yeah, you know, those next which two, is unusual for him. Yeah, He's yeah. usually solid, so yeah. we all were like, "Hello, yeah. what happened?" Yeah, he just barely missed it, and, and again he. 
you know, we'll it could have been anything. For this but one time. but uh, <laughs> knock those next two through, and then was true on all all yeah. three extra points. So, uh, you know, he's uh, if I'm not mistaken, he's actually our leading scorer right now overall. Uh, okay. I think he, he's, uh, so you'll take it. Yeah, yeah. You'll take it. Yeah, absolutely. So, so that that's kind of neat. Uh, I'm sure you've got more people coming in, mm -hmm. recruiters coming in to see him every game as well. Yeah, so I, I think I think that things are going to continue to progress for him, especially as the as some of the the smaller schools kind of start coming out uh, mm -hmm. here as we get later in the season and and uh, and, th and uh, closer to. November, December, January, and they, they kind of start lining out, seeing who's going to land where. And, yeah. And, uh, you know, he's going to have a lot of options out there. We're going yeah. to start reaching out and making some connections for him, too. And and uh, he's working hard in the classroom and, and all faces trying to, to get right. ready to go. Happy for him and his family. That's really exciting. All right, we t want to talk about Gavin Holberg. Mm -hmm. Three-yard touchdown run right there in the third quarter. Yeah, and set kind it up with a, with a big run. Oh, yeah, 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 uh, right before. He, he, it, was on, it was the exact same play that Jabari had broke. We just had Gavin in, and, and uh, Gavin broke it down the right sideline there and, and uh, got tracked down late in the run. I know he was wanting to bust the big run, but then he ended up hitting the touchdown there a couple plays later and finishing off the drive, so a really good run for him. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, then started being able to get some of the, the younger guys in and went to a full sophomore backfield. and and uh, started you know rotating some guys in some of our receivers and things in because you know it, it it's so hard you know to to get everyone in and, and try to get everyone in and get them opportunity mm -hmm. it's it's a, even in a situation like that you know because we, we do have a lot of guys that, that can do a lot of things well so you know trying to get everybody in trying to, to reward some guys for for uh, when a you're lot of hard so work and and get, yes yes and and you know, and certainly there's a lot of things that go into that, but but at that point in the game, we definitely want to try mm -hmm. to get some folks in, give them an opportunity to play, and reward them get for all that hard minutes. work that they do on the, uh, throughout practice, all through the off season and summer and the right. season. Now, do you coach differently once that running clock starts, or is there, is there anything your coaching staff that you guys have to implement differently? Well, yeah, I, I, you know, like I say, I don't think I, I don't think our guys really coach that much differently in that point. For me, as a head coach, I'm thinking, okay, at this point, look, we want to we want to do this thing the right way. We we want to win this game. We want to keep our, our mm -hmm. guys healthy. We want to finish strong, but we want to keep our guys healthy. You know, the the real thing is always. You, you you don't want to because I've been on the other side of it. Mm. I, I've been on the other side of those. Running it was the Lexington Catholic game the year well, before. <laughs> yeah, there and and, and I remember know, that that was homecoming, uh, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There, I there, remember that game. There and other times before that, for sure. I mean, it, it's it's you know it, it's not fun being on the other sideline. It's right. not. But so you know, and and you have to know that that in this game those times are going to come around yeah you know there's going to be times where you're on we're the on good side sides. and you're on the bad so you want to make sure that you handle that in the most respectful way that you can for the other team uh, i would never want to you know humiliate another team's ch kids right oh but, yes but you know things like that and at the same time we want to make sure that our guys who have been practicing hard and been playing hard and doing things the right way are getting an opportunity to play so uh, you know, there's lots of things going. On. But my, you know, my thing is, is we're going to do this thing the right way. Mm -hmm. We're going to get our kids in. We're going to play as many kids as we can, and and, and we're going to try to stay healthy right. and, and and finish this thing off. So, uh, you know, and and that's uh, you know starting to push things. So I'm probably wearing my coordinators out. That, <laughs> that, that I'm, I'm probably they they probably get more sick of me during those times than they do yeah. any other time because I'm like, okay, we got to get, get this one in, get this one in, get this one in. So, well, uh, especially with that clock running, yeah, like that. and, and I mean, the clock going running so much quicker, so faster. So it, it does make a difference. But, but uh, you know, those are great problems to have, and that, yes. that, that, I will take that problem as often as we can get it. That's Any right. week, mm -hmm. absolutely. You were talking about healthy. How is the team as far as, you know, it's going to be flu season. Yeah. Also, injuries. Well, and, you know, and I'll be honest about that side of it. We've seemed to have been battling for weeks now and continue to do so. You know, it's. It's, the coughing uh, it's and just, the hacking. Yeah, the, yeah. I mean, it's it's allergy season. It's the yes. flu stuff coming. You know, a lot, yeah. it seemed like strep throat's been having had an early start this year, and and just things like that. So you know, we're doing all we can in terms of disinfecting and and trying to keep everything clean and things like that. And 
and and keeping the players healthy and, and and those type of pieces but from you know from a physical injury standpoint you know we're in pretty decent shape we're starting to get get some guys back who have been uh, out with with various things you know, had a, a couple of guys with some concussion issues on this on the the JV level and, and that that are that, and, and well and they were playing key reserve roles on the varsity as well and so uh, that had thinned us out a little bit from the reserve roles for the last couple of weeks but we're starting to get them mm -hmm. back now and, and it looks like uh, you know hopefully everything goes well with that and getting them to return. Uh, Hendricks been battling a little bit of a sore ankle with that. That uh, he had a, a pretty good sprain here a few weeks ago, and and uh, was was very limited against Catholic, and then has been coming back and coming back. So uh, he's starting to move a little bit better, and, and thing. And then the other stuff is really just bangs and bruises and bumps and things like that mm -hmm. that that we feel like with uh, you know we're, we're, this open week we're going to make sure that we focus on conditioning you know we're, we're practicing just as we would in a normal week we're just you know going about it in just a little bit different way uh, we want to make sure we keep our conditioning level high and, and, and as to the greatest extent possible uh, you know get our guys healthy and right. so maybe the contact will be a little bit lower but the the intensity and conditioning level will be a little bit higher so right. it'll balance out and uh, you know like I say right now uh, we're starting to get a few guys back, and, and hopefully by the time next Thursday rolls around, we'll be in as good a shape as we, we've been in in a while. Yeah, it's probably good to have that uh, week off. To I really value this time, uh, mm -hmm. it, it, the week five, six range uh, uh, the, for these past scheduling cycles and this next scheduling cycle that has worked out to be able to have that open date uh, in week six. I value that again, not not only because of the way that I like to split the season up and 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 approach with a new, fresh, you know, feeling going into the district play, but it, you know you want to have every opportunity to try to get the team healthy as possible right. going into district right. play. Um, you know, there's there's some things that you, we have to overcome. Uh, you know, in years past, uh, you know, we would be starting to hit our stride offensively a little bit and then having that open week you know so you know a lot of times when you're starting to score a lot of points offensively it's kind of like a baseball player who's in a hitting group yes you want to play you want to keep going that's right so you know it's going to take some discipline on our players part and and our coaches part as well to continue to work but mm -hmm. uh, I, I personally think this team the way that we've been handling things i feel like we'll be okay we just need to keep our, our head on straight and keep mm -hmm. focused on on the task at hand and use this time to get better and, and truly have extra prep time for the district. I want to mention that you guys had 343 yards of total offense in last week's game. Mm -hmm. With that, I want to let you know that you, and you already know this, but we want to let everybody else know this, that you limited Woodford County to just 44 total yards. Yeah. That That's got to make you proud of your defense. Oh, absolutely. You know, there's no question about that. And, and uh, you know those those guys they they're wanting to score on defense. And they, they, they're wanting to do some of that they don't want to so. just play yeah. defense. They yeah. now want to turn defense yeah. into offense. That's right, and I'm okay with that. Absolutely, That's exactly where we go. But you know, in Woodford County again, uh, the they're they're a team that is improving. Uh, I do feel like that their team as a whole, their their team speed is definitely better than last year. Uh, they're the, they have a couple of kids, uh, you know, the quarterback and and uh, one of the receivers in particular are very nice athletes, and if they get out in open space, mm -hmm. they can flat go. Um, so, you know, I, any opponent that's on our schedule to be able to limit them to that type of offensive mm -hmm. production, our defense has had a phenomenal night, and they definitely did. Uh, you know, it's uh, you know, good to have that showing, but, uh, you know, that is we're, mm -hmm. we're only as good as the last time out and only as good as the as next time As each week, out, so. that's right, that's right. Yeah, I want to mention you guys had three turnovers, and if I was adding them up right, I'm thinking it was 11 for the season. Yeah, I think we're plus 11 on the season. Yeah, yeah. good. I nailed it. I, I, believe, that's, I believe that's accurate as, as far as where we're at, but... Uh, you know, and that, that's, again... Three turnovers in one part. game. Yeah, that's a big number. Yeah, be, takeaways. Uh, our defense has been taking the ball away at a pretty good clip, and, and, and thankfully our offense has not been giving it away, you know, too many times. So we've, uh, you know, that that is a very big key. You know, the, anybody who's heard me talk knows that I'm, I'm, I preach blocking, I, tell you, I preach tackling, I preach ball control and taking mm -hmm. care of the football. And, uh, you know, if we're taking the ball away, uh, more than we're giving it away, that's a great sign any season. All right. Your defense limited them to only seven first downs. Mm -hmm. 
you know, well, and with their yardage, you know, that, that, uh, 15 that, rushing, 29 passing. Yeah. With, with, with their yardage being as low as it was, you know, those first downs were, were, were key, you know, I mean, that, mm -hmm. that, uh, that really was a, a kind of, uh, high first downs considered their, their yardage, but, but they, the, the lost yardage, when they would get a first down, our defense would immediately respond and turn around. And so many times after they had a first down play, our defense responded with a huge, uh, ne you know, mm -hmm. big play and put to put them in the negative yardage right back. So, you know, and that's a knack again. I, I truly believe that in our, our defense and, and our guys that the, the, they've got that knack of making plays when they matter. And, and making big plays at critical times. And that's something that, that's a trait that we definitely need to, to ramp up another notch here uh, as we, we go through the last part of the season here and, and get that ready because that's something that can really help us come playoff time. Let's talk about Houlihan. I think he had three sacks or two sacks. Yep. He had two, you, yep, you guys three. had three total. Yep. He had two. Yep, team had three. And He'll he, probably he think had he two had two three. Yeah, yeah, we had tackles. Uh, <laughs> we'll tell him he's got to get one next week. Several tackles for loss. Uh, you know, for team wide, had, had several tackles for loss. And, and those, you know, those things are really piling up now too. When you look at the season as a whole, uh, the, the tackles for loss is, are really high. Uh, and, and again, you know, all the credit goes to the kids and playing hard and playing their assignment mm -hmm. and really getting after it. Let's talk about somebody we talk about on defense every week, Tristan Moorhead. Yeah. You know, he had that big interception. Yes. Uh, Tristan is really, you know, in many ways, and, and you got to say Tristan and KJ because yeah. they, they – Team play it's off good of, team. Oh, they are, and they, they play off of one another a lot too. But you know, there are two leading tacklers. But you know, Tristan really very much an anchor to our defense, and uh, you know, he makes our defensive calls. He gets make sure that we're in the right set. He you know he, he's able to make some adjustments out there on the field as well. Uh, and you know, and, and I'm telling you, if if you are uh, you know, a high school football coach at least, uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, Tristan's got. Uh, Couple schools, Rose Holman in particular, looking at him, a great engineering school up in Indiana. You know, when you look at a guy like Tristan Moorhead, that is the guy, the type of kid that you want playing football. Uh, he is just that, that, that perfect mixture of of young man because he is just an outstanding student. Three point nine plus GPA in all AP classes. Guy, uh, I think I'm pretty sure he's 27, 28 on ACT. Really high ACT score. One of the most polite young men you'll meet. Mm -hmm. You see him in the hallways. He's always yes sir, no sir, whether it's on the field, whether it's in the hallway, wherever. His teachers rave about what a good kid he is. Yeah. He's a great leader in the school. And then you get him on the football field and that and, and that side of him comes out where he wants to go rip somebody's head off. <laughs> and you're like, and, where does that come from? Well, I, and that, <laughs> and that, that is what, what football, in my opinion, yeah. is all about. Uh, you know, it gives you that ability to kind of turn loose and, mm -hmm. and, and and uh, you know, go play the game hard and fast in the right way, and and you know, and that's you know one of my favorite things about Tristan, and, and we've got a lot of guys in that mold. Uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, KJ not too different from that. A lot of guys are in that mold, and I think that's one of the things that that uh, one of the attributes about our defense that I really admire, and, and team wide, it's coming because a, a lot of our offensive linemen also kind of exemplify that same uh, you know, kind of ca kind of character. You know, mm -hmm. our guys are are. are Good, strong young men off the field, and, and and are playing with a lot of fire and intensity on the field. And the, to me, that's what that's what it's all about. Well, we got to mention Kenton Humphrey, Michael Holland. They both had fumble recoveries. Yeah, both from the safety position. Yeah. Uh, both of those guys playing well. You know, Humphrey's come along uh, and really established himself as as a, a key member of our, our defense at the varsity level. You know. And, and and for for him to really as a sophomore develop like that and and. You know, we were playing a lot of young kids. We really are. Uh, hey, when, when you look team wide, a lot of those sophomores are really starting to establish themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, several of our juniors who are, are beginning to establish themselves, and and uh, you know, we we've got even more depth than that. We've got guys coming working hard every day. But you know, Kim has done a really nice job of of uh, establishing himself at that safety position and really. Being a key member, uh, a smart football player plays hard. Uh, he he's a, a pretty hard hitter for uh, for a safety, and, and uh, we we have very high hopes for him. He's doing mm -hmm. a good job. Well, I'm sure. I 
there are many, many, we could probably fill up a three hour show if we oh, yeah. talked about all of them because this defense that you got everybody in town's talking about. So yeah. it's pretty exciting to watch and we want to make sure everybody knows that you're off this week. Make sure you come to the game October the 6th. So it's right. not going to be on that Friday night. So we do want to remind everybody. Um, We've talked about a lot tonight, Coach. Yeah, yeah. We, you know, and the big thing is, is, is we know that that, that we've just got to keep going. You know, yes. and, and that's that's the message that the players are hearing every day, and that, that's the message that we really want to try to get across. You know, as much as anything, because you know this district schedule coming in, uh, you know, this is where it's going to set us up for our postseason seed. You know, I, I feel like that this team has all the tools and all the ingredients that 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 we need to have to have a very successful. Uh, district run, second and third season, as mm -hmm. it is, and, and, and but but we're it's time, very soon it's going to be time to put that into action. Right. And uh, you know we we got we we're only as good as our next one, so we got to keep. That's playing. right. Opening up district play against Tate Creek October the sixth. It is a home game, so yes. it's going to be a big, big, big game. Let's yeah. hope the fans, the students, everybody comes. Yeah, need a big crowd. It is fall we break, do. so we know that there's going to be some people starting to travel and things like that. Hopefully they'll. Uh, hang on one more night and maybe leave out early Friday, Friday. morning. Uh, and I'm come, assuming you don't get a fall break. <laughs> no, I haven't had fall break in years. <laughs> and, uh, I, that's, uh, the, the, uh, us and the uh, football coaches and the band. Uh, yes, folks, it, and it, maybe it, soccer. It, it, yeah, yeah. Sometimes. They don't get fall it, breaks either. It, it, it's tough. It's tough for for us to have fun, but you know that, that's what the baseball the folks job, and softball it? folks do. They don't get spring, the spring break. <laughs> that's right. So, <laughs> that's right. so it's all good. You know, it, it's uh, that we we need to make we make the most of our time and and uh, you know take advantage of this open week and certainly get ready for a big one. But, uh, but yeah, need a huge crowd. Uh, I'm sure Tate's Creek will be bringing some folks down. And again, you know, uh, this this was would probably going to be one of the bigger games in the state, even on a Friday night. But you bump it to a Thursday night, and and uh, my opinion is it'll be tough to rival as far as being one of the biggest games in the state. So I'm sure you're glad it's at home too. Definitely, yeah, yeah. definitely glad it's at home. We had a war with them up there at their place last year, yeah. and uh, just had had uh, two opportunities to win it in overtime, and and uh, you know, we wasn't able to quite finish the deal. So this year we want to make sure that we finish the deal. Finish it, and, uh, not get it into even overtime. Oh, yeah. yeah we, <laughs> Regulation we, we, time. They're, they're, it, it takes, no rain. Tate's Creek's an extremely explosive team. You know, they, they really have made great improvements offensively and defensively as the season has went along. I'll, I'll be honest with you, they remind me a lot of us. They do. Uh, they, they, we're, I think we're two very similar teams. Now, they're they're – Throwing it up and down, you know, they, they, you you may see them throw it 45 times. You may see them throw it 20 times, you know. But but they really like to try to get the ball to those two outside guys, those two playmakers, on, uh, wide receivers that they've got. Uh, but the development of their team and how mm -hmm. they've progressed, they remind me a lot of us. So. so it should make for a good football. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a good game. Good game. Well, Coach, thanks for being with us. Thank we you. always appreciate it, and we know this is – two big weeks that you guys have had and two big weeks coming up. Yep. So we're really excited to be a part of it and we wish you good luck. Thank you very we're much. We're going to be right there with you. Looking forward to it. All right. Thanks for watching. Thanks to our great sponsors, Jack Burford, Chevrolet, ExpressRoofing.net, Hummer the Valley, National Bank, CSEP, State Farm Insurance, Jerry Goble Agent, Luxury Pet Services, Equipment, Sales and Rentals, May Marketing, KYMedia.net, Real Life Community Church, Time Warner Cable, and Madison County School. Hey everybody, be a friend of Madison County School Sports Television on Facebook, MCS TV on Facebook. Log on and like us now. Hello everyone, I'm Madison County School Superintendent Elmer Thomas and I want to thank you for watching Madison County School Sports Television. Follow Madison County School Sports Television on Twitter or like us on Facebook, MCS TV, and of course, watch all of our videos on YouTube.